Are we starting to see the decline of YouTube? I think we might be. I think we've reached a tipping point because of some of the decisions that YouTube has made in the last couple of years. I really think we're going to start seeing more and more content creators and more and more viewers of video content moving to alternative platforms. And I think the biggest reason for this is that YouTube is now dominated by corporate channels. YouTube is no longer designed for we, the independent content creator. That is not what YouTube is geared for anymore. YouTube is all about attracting the big corporate channels to their platform. So let's discuss this a bit further. So we are seeing the corporate takeover of the YouTube platform. YouTube used to be a platform that promoted video content creation from individuals, right? We're talking regular people with a camera and a microphone, or in some cases, maybe all they had was a laptop with a built-in camera and a built-in microphone, or in many other cases, maybe all they had was a cell phone. And that's all you needed, right? You could just be a regular average person and you could start a YouTube channel, put videos out there, people would watch it, and people craved that sort of content, that raw, organic content. Now the platform is dominated by corporations. Most of the top channels are corporate channels. Most of the stuff that YouTube is pushing to you, the viewer, is corporate content. So we see some disturbing trends. We see some very clear trends, though, in the last decade. 80% of the top 100 channels were independent YouTubers 10 years ago in 2010. Fast forward a decade later, only 28% of the top 100 channels were independent YouTubers at the end of 2019. Most of the top 100 YouTube channels now are music labels, you know, all the Vivo channels, brand names, TV shows like late night TV shows. WWE is a huge YouTube channel. Um, we see uh, most of the top 100 are official celebrity channels, etc. Very, very few of the really big channels now are just a guy and his camera anymore. PewDiePie really being the one exception. So what changed in the last 10 years? Uh, well, first of all, there's been a 52% increase in subscriptions to these big corporate channels and these mainstream celebrity channels on YouTube. Why do viewers crave that content? Well, there, that may be the case, but I think it's a clear sign that YouTube is doing more to shift focus to that sort of content. They are promoting the corporate channels much more so than they are the independent YouTubers. I think YouTube now deems the corporate channels as authoritative sources over just a channel from an independent YouTuber. YouTube has also gone out of its way to attract celebrities and celebrity brands to the platform. YouTube set up what they called the Public Figure Partnership Team, which was an outreach to celebrities. The goal was to explain to them how to use YouTube as a platform, how best to start their own channel and promote themselves on YouTube. In 2018, it was reported that the company, YouTube, began offering public figures between five and six figure lump sums to subsidize their startup costs for their channels. Now, that's not much money, a five or six figure startup bonus for a celebrity, you know, for a very famous, rich public figure. That's not much money, but it is something. And the fact that they were offering this kind of money to celebrities to attract them to the platform, again, tells us the direction that YouTube is wanting to go for their platform. So 10 years ago, YouTube was dominated by the independent creator, right? Just regular guys, you and me. Back then, the average YouTube video runtime 10 years ago was only three minutes. You know, it was short form factor. Ten years ago, creators were rewarded more in terms of ad revenue. I wasn't on YouTube ten years ago, but the folks that have been in the game for that length of time tell me that AdSense revenue was much better years ago than what it is now. Uh, certainly ten years ago, you didn't have as much of the censorship, the demonetizations, the bannings. They weren't as commonplace as they are now. Fast forward 10 years to today, check out your YouTube homepage. So if you're logged into YouTube right now, go to youtube.com, go to the homepage. How many of the video suggestions that you see on that homepage are from corporate channels? I bet most are. 
Average video runtime, remember 10 years ago, it was only three minutes. The average video runtime in 2020 is now closer to half an hour in length. We're talking about average runtime now being closer to what you would think for a 30 minute network television show. Also in the last 10 years, we've seen a drop in AdSense revenue. The ad revenue is lower for creators. In recent years, we've seen the adpocalypse. We've seen the demonetizations, the mass bannings. They're kind of the new norm, and that's due to increased pressure on YouTube from its advertisers. And guess what kind of creators pay the biggest price when YouTube institutes these new changes, like the adpocalypse changes and the demonetizations? The independent creator is the one that suffers. It is not the corporate channels that pay the price. So what are our other options? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of good options just yet, even though I think YouTube is starting to destroy itself with some of the policies that it's starting to institute. There's still no really good place out there to go to just yet. Some of the options that are out there, some of the ones that have been around for a long time, include Vimeo, Dailymotion, Metacafe. Vimeo, though, has some pretty serious restrictions on what you're able to upload if you're a free user. You really have to be a paid content creator. You have to actually pay Vimeo some monthly fees to actually be able to do what you want to do on Vimeo. Daily Motion has some upload limits as well, but they're more relaxed as far as their content rules compared to YouTube. That may or may not be a good thing for some people. Metacafe is not a real option because Metacafe focuses entirely on short form content you know, 90 second or less in length videos. Facebook is becoming more and more of an option, but I mean, who wants to leave YouTube to go to Facebook, I, right? You, you leave one evil website to go to another, probably not. We're looking for better alternatives. Some of the ones that have gained a little bit of press here in the last year or two are options like BitChute, DTube, and PeerTube. PeerTube is not a great option because you have to host your own video. That is a severe limitation for content creators. If you have a large video library, then you would go broke hosting your own PeerTube instance unless you have some way to monetize that. Speaking of BitChute, DTube, and PeerTube, the fact that you're not really going to be able to monetize your videos is also a severe limitation of those platforms right now, at least until you get a real audience on those platforms and in the case of something like PeerTube until you're able to actually monetize those videos, serve ads on those videos. The YouTube alternative that I have been the most impressed with, the one that I've been happy with is Library. L-B-R-Y, Library. Now, is the Library platform perfect? No. But it's free and open source software and it's gaining in popularity. And there's never going to be an adpocalypse on library. You never have to worry about censorship, mass bannings, demonetizations, that sort of thing. You don't have to worry about adpocalypse on library because you're paid in donations by your viewers, which I think is just a beautiful way to monetize content. So there you have it. YouTube, I think we all know is now dominated by the corporate channels. It's all these professionally produced, polished, almost network television style programming. And YouTube, which really used to have a real soul to it because of this raw, organic, independent content, YouTube now, I think, is spiritually dead. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the patrons of this channel. I want to sincerely thank each and every one of those ladies and gentlemen that you see on the screen there, all those names you see. Those guys help support me over on Patreon. Without them, this episode wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.